Hi everybody and welcome to another one of our short videos and today I thought I'd talk about a topic that we get asked about quite a lot and that is how do you titrate the doses of, of opioids um, safely and effectively. Now probably where we should start on this is actually going back to that concept I introduced in one of my other videos about long and short acting opioids because we know that most patients are going to be on a combination of these drugs and actually how they are dosed together is fairly important. So if we take a patient who's on a long acting opioid, what dose of short acting opioid should we be using? Well there's a fairly simple rule and that is that the dose of the short acting opioid should be about one-sixth of the total daily dose of the long-acting opioid. So, to take an example, let's say we've got a patient who's on long-acting morphine. They're on something like MS Contin, and it's 30 milligrams twice a day. Well, that means they're on 60 milligrams of long-acting opioid in a day, so if we take a six of that, the dose of breakthrough morphine that they'll be on will be 10 milligrams. So it's fairly easy to work out, if you know what the long acting dose is, what the short acting dose is. And what's really, really important is that that uh, proportion, uh, if you like, is kept constant as you increase or decrease the dose. So what sometimes happens, and one of the pitfalls that people fall into, is that they will um, get the ratio right when they start the patient on the drug. And then they'll titrate up the background dose, but still keep the patient on the same short acting dose. And as the patient gets escalated on background, that short acting dose gets smaller and smaller in comparison and you get less effective analgesia. So it's really important that you understand this concept of ratios and that when you're titrating opioids, you keep the same proportion. Okay, so that, that's kind of the first rule. So moving on to how you might sort of think about titrating a patient up um, on an opioid. And, and the first question that you've got to ask is, is, do you need to actually increase the dose of the opioid? Now again, this really comes back to having an understanding of some of the concepts that we introduced in that other video about long and short acting opioids. And understanding that a patient having pain and consequently a need for having breakthrough analgesia is normal. It's what we expect. So if you get presented with a scenario where the patient is using breakthrough analgesia, the question that you've got to ask yourself is, is the patient using more than I would reasonably expect? Is their, is their pain behaviour um, outside what I would call the spectrum of normality. So again, as we've discussed previously, patients who get pain when they move might have quite frequent pain. And just the presence of that pain and their need for analgesia might not actually necessitate an increase in opioid. So again, sometimes the pitfall that people fall into is that they just try to escalate the opioids to stop these pain occurrences and consequently you then get opioid overdose. So first question you ask yourself is, do I actually need to increase the opioid? And if you look at the patient and you assess the patient and, and what they've been doing in terms of their pain and, and think this is outside what I would consider to be acceptable, then you can increase the opioid. Now, in terms of how you increase opioids, the 
best way to do it and probably the safest way to do it is to think about increases in terms of about a third. Now, obviously with the different opioid preparations, um, it's not always practical to titrate up exactly by a third. Um, it really depends on, on the different doses of the tablets that you've got available. So something like MS Compton would be available in 10 milligram tablets, 30 milligram tablets, 60 milligram tablets, and, and how you combine those to get your dose increments is obviously gonna vary. But generally about a third increase is safe and effective. Um, certainly you wouldn't want to go any higher than a 50% increase. Um, and you tend to use increases that high when you're at quite low doses of opioid and you're sort of constrained by the, the dosage of the tablets that's available. Again, you probably don't want to go any lower than 25% increment because again, then you get into really too low an increment um, that it's going to be effective. So again, if we go back to that patient who was taking MS Compton 30 milligrams twice a day and their short acting opioid was 10 milligrams of ordine when they needed. Let's say we've been asked to assess that patient and they're still having some trouble with their pain. They're still using more breakthrough analgesia than we're comfortable with. So probably what we'd do there is we'd do a 30% increase and we'd increase their MS Compton to 40 milligrams twice a day. And then we've got to adjust the dose of the ordine as well. Now, if we have the patient on the new dose of the MS Compton, 40 milligrams twice a day, that's about 80 milligrams a day in the background. Now, it's very difficult to find a, exactly a sixth of that, but probably the nearest equivalent is to then go on to 15 milligrams of ordine. That's roughly where we want to be. So, you do a 30% increase, both of the long acting and of the short acting. Now, the reverse is true as well. There are some instances where you might actually need to reduce down the dose of the opioid. And again, providing it's not an emergency situation, you would reduce by a third of the time. Again, that's quite a safe but effective dose reduction. So, just to recap some of the key points on this. First of all, be aware of the proportions that you need to maintain between a long-acting opioid and a short-acting opioid. And remember that, that rule of six, that really the short-acting opioid should be dosed at about a sixth of the total daily background dose of opioid. And you've got to keep that proportionality as you move up and down the dosage. Be aware that sometimes you're going to be faced with patients who've got pain, but they don't need an opioid increase. It's only if their pain requirements are over and above what we would normally and reasonably expect. And if you do need to do an increase in the dose of the opioids, then generally a one third increment at a time is safe and effective. And again, these are some simple ground rules that mean that your prescribing is going to be safe but effective for your patients. Well, thanks for joining me for that short clip of palliative education and I'll look forward to seeing you for another video in the near future.